from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Good day and welcome. My name is Monsignor Sam Bianco. I welcome you to this celebration of the Daily TV Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of Rita Marion Walsh of Upper Tantalon, Nova Scotia. This Mass is offered in memory of Rita, who passed away on September the 11th, 2016. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the Mass of the Passion and Death of St. John the Baptist. To do this in a proper manner, we ask the Lord for mercy for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that St. John the Baptist should go ahead of your son, both in his birth and in his death, grant that, as he died a martyr for truth and justice, we too may fight hard for the confession of what we teach. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord was addressed to me, saying, Gird up your loins. Stand up and tell the people everything that I command you, and do not break down before them, or I will break you before them. And I, for my part, have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar, a bronze wall against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its princes, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you, but you shall not prevail, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. The word of the Lord. I will sing your salvation. I will sing your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing your salvation. For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. Upon you I have leaned from my birth. It was you who took me from my mother's womb. I will sing your salvation. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all day long. O oh God, from my youth you have taught me and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing your salvation. All 
Suffer persecution for justice sake, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Herod himself has sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that John was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When Herod heard John, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want to give me, you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for the oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. The soldier went and beheaded John in the prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took John's body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Grudge, feared John's body. St. Mark wrote this gospel at the time of the Roman persecutions of the early Christian community. The gospel was written to give the early Christian community the strength and the courage to withstand attacks from Roman persecutors. It also spoke to the people to give them an understanding and the strength to grapple with the internal divisions in the Christian community that arose immediately after Jesus' resurrection. The story of John the Baptist's passion goes back to the obscenity of his death. John challenged elements within his own community who lacked courage and strength. He spoke to the leadership and the false example and the false direction they gave to his own people. John was Jewish. He loved the Jewish people. How his own people, his family of faith, responded and reacted to the will of God was what God sent him to do. One of the central elements I think we would all agree in the ministry of John is his extraordinary courage. It was a courage that spoke the truth no matter who was against him. He knew that to speak against Herod and Herodias was to bring on revenge, wrath, and their vengeful desire to be rid of him. 
He drank deeply of the spirit of the prophet Jeremiah. Do not break or bow down before them. The evil that John saw came from the free will and the free decisions of the men and women who ruled over God's people at the time. Not all the chosen people were equally guilty of the crimes against which John spoke. There's no false equivalency here. Some were more responsible than others, and this was especially true of the leaders. At the same time, in various degrees, all members of the community had fallen away from the covenant and the deep love that God had for them. The reason for John's preaching was to seek a change of heart and conversion. It was to proclaim the great and abiding love of the Father for the community and for the people created by God. He loved the people when they were faithful, and God cherished them when they were evil and unfaithful. At the root of John's preaching is the love of the Father for the chosen people's leaders and the common folk. There were sins of omission and commission with good people in between, especially close to the Father were the little people who suffered from the brutality and the insouciance of their leadership. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. We want to know what is the source of John's courage? His courage came from his personality, his prayer, his family, the prophets of Israel. Deeply woven into John's courage are the words and the desire of God the Father. It is this courage that Jesus understood and brought to bear on his own ministry. Courage in the case of both John and Jesus comes from their intimate community with the Father married to their human gifts. The first place to look for signs of goodness and evil are within our own lives and our own communities. Every community faces internal and external evil. Courage is the fruit of being a prepared to see evil, revenge, and superstition within ourselves and our own communities. Then we take appropriate restorative action. If Jesus was a man for all seasons, then Jesus and John are persons for all times. We associate John the Baptist with a rigor and sternness of spirit as he calls out the evil of his times. Jesus was close to John. He saw his suffering. He heard his preaching. He knew the dangers that would befall him by following the path of his cousin. He did it with the same courage that St. John had, only with a deeper fortitude. To John's courage, he brought a powerful joy and an overwhelming love for the people among whom he came to live, served, and be served. We are that people. Given the crisis of our times, and especially in the church, we need the same focus that Jesus and John had. We look first to the victims of abuse of authority and focus on their cries. We next do an examine of our own sins and feelings as communities and as churches. Not all are equally responsible. Some church leaders and church authorities bear the burden of the bulk of the responsibility because they had the authority and the power to stop the evil. And in God's justice and charity, we trust that they will be called to account. If all of us keep our focus on those who suffered and are suffering, and those persons who, like John the Baptist, were victims of cruelty, then it is possible for the door to be opened for reform, restoration, and healing. John's broken body was put into a tomb. Jesus' grace and our free will can bring life from that tomb. Will you join with me, please, and we'll offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. In thanksgiving to God for the gift of Jesus and John the Baptist, we pray to the Lord. For the victims of abuse, that their cries be heard, that they receive justice, compensation, and healing, we pray to the Lord. 
for all of us who are in positions of authority that we exercise power with transparency, accountability, and humble service, we pray to the Lord. For those people in our daily TV mass community who ask to be remembered in our prayer intentions, especially for families, for peace at heart in times of blessing and difficulty, protection for children, and respect for the elderly and vulnerable persons, we pray to the Lord. For those persons who lack adequate food, housing, and shelter, and for those persons with mental health challenges and their families, we pray to the Lord. We take a moment, please, to pray for our own personal intentions, for the people we love and care for, for those united with us in prayer, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, not all of us have courage. We beg you, give us a share in the spirit of courage and love witnessed to by the lives of Jesus and John the Baptist. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Through these offerings which we bring you, O Lord, grant that we may make straight your paths as taught by that voice crying in the desert, St. John the Baptist, who powerfully sealed his teaching by the shedding of his blood. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In his precursor, St. John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of women. His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ 
at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint John the Baptist, and with all the saints on whose intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O God, on the first Pentecost, you instructed the hearts of those who believed in you by the light of the Holy Spirit. Under the inspiration of the same Spirit, give us a taste for what is right and true and a continuing sense of his presence and power through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, as we celebrate the heavenly birth of St. John the Baptist, that we may revere for what it signifies, the saving sacrament we have received, and even more, may rejoice at its clear effects in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. In the summer months, everything slows down a little, including our mail. Everything that is except our expenses in broadcasting the daily Mass. Winter, fall, summer, spring, they say the same. So do keep us in mind, and remember, whatever you can send us will help keep Daily Mass on television. Never.